to adjust to when they mm -hmm. when they got to GH and and Miracle at some point. It took a, a while for them to adjust to you know reach their peak. Probably they 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 figured it out uh around January February last year. Mm -hmm. So I'd probably give them the same Five amount of time. Remain. Okay. January, February. Oh, They'd already won a major by that time ban. though. Yeah, but it was like uh it was like do you mean liquid? Last uh year? that point uh, OG. Or do you mean uh, liquid liquid got themselves together in January, February? Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what I'm talking about. Okay, okay. And, and it's usually around the second half where teams st start and to so figure things out bad. a little more. Speaking of figuring things out, have you figured out the war room? Oh, geez. Are you Turn good to go? To <laughs> uh, I think preschools prepared me pretty well for this. I mm -hmm. put the colorful pictures on the the table. Yes. And you know that's that's <laughs> about it. Well, this is the perfect time to test it. It is time for game one. Ten it's time for the draft. A mid or feet versus OG. You can just walk All up. Right. There's no bumper. There's just you oh, walking yeah, away from us back. and uh, installing yourself at the war room. And uh, we will be able to help you by telling you what bands there are and uh, what picks there are. You can probably see yourself, but bands, I think, okay. are a little bit cut off for your monitor. Right, so we uh, got uh, Tiny Clockwork, oh, Nice Soccer, Brewmaster, <laughs> Shadow Demon. You don't need to put all of them. You don't need to put My all of them. God, okay. I mean, you said we're preschool starting, prepare you well. We're, we're, right, we're starting right. slow. Yeah. So, so tiny, you said Tiny Clockwork. Yeah, it's alphabetized, right? So the yeah, first yeah. rack has, like, I think Brewmaster's up there. Clockwork Dying. is maybe up there. And they're all, like, behind each other. That's yeah. what makes it hard. All right, Brewmaster, you said Clockwork. Yeah. Uh, Tiny's on your right, on your right hand side. There's. Okay, the picks. Winter Wyvern is also on your right hand side. Go right. <laughs> All right, is Winter Wyvern a pick? Go right. Winter Wyvern is first pick for OG. There you go. You found it. All right. Ten seconds Wyvern. remaining. It will take some time to get used to. <laughs> and and um, to be fair, not some... exactly in alphabetical order. That's fine. It's... All right. Some teams are a little bit faster with it than other teams. Wyvern is is OG it's radiant dire? side. OG, OG is radiant side. Oh, okay. OG is radiant. All right. Let's 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 put this guy in the safe lane right here. You gotta you gotta flip it 180 degrees. All right. Yes. All right. Got him. This is, by the way, NA preschool education from Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got this. I got this. All right. All right. And then we have a void. Yeah, void and an AA for mid or feet. Mm -hmm. All right. Ancient. So even though we saw the, the Navi AA mid, I'm pretty sure that is not plan A here for mid or feet. Yeah. That, uh, they, they are all, Synergy was all about the double bubble, and this is already a double bubble. So they got the Synergy going, they got the team fight going. Is that the official name for it? Dude, the this double. is definitely not an alphabetical order. There is no <laughs> ancient apparition amongst the A's. Yeah, there is. There are four A heroes. It is Abaddon, Arc Warden, Alchemist, and Axe. There is no A here. <laughs> <laughs> there is no... I see an anti-mage. Is he not behind the anti-mage? No, that's Bloodseeker. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, you, you better get, get good. <laughs> I blame Grand Grant. That's okay, I'll allow it. All right, here's Void. This is a mid or feed Void. We have um, a puck for OG. What do you reckon? Because it's, is this an S4 puck? Um, I think oh, OG will dr draft and play the puck very similarly to the way that EG does it where they have it on at least two out of three lane, possible. So it's just a good safe pick right now that you yeah. don't really know. Putting a mid is safer now, but it's not guaranteed. And yes, that's where you could definitely remaining. play the puck. Also, as I recall it, OG used to be a big fan of the Drow Ranger, right? So if you do pick the Drow Ranger up, then puck could play it in the uh, off lane. Dude. Where did the Ancient Apparition come from? Ancient Apparition was put in front of Zeus. Aha! <laughs> this is definitely a, a Grand Grant development. All right. Uh, second phase bands. We got a Marana and a Ventral Spirit, Charlie. Uh, I guess I'll Venge around here. I just banned. Ten seconds remaining. 
Does anything is is out of the ordinary for you so far, Lumi, or is this kind of what we were thinking of seeing? Actually, where is Beastmaster? Beastmaster is ignored. That's the thing that I'm surprised about. Um, I, we talked about the interaction between Wyvern and Beastmaster, so I, I don't think mid or feet particularly is looking for the for that hero. But about the hero that just got banned, OG wants Ten to take away the remaining. easy Chronos here into arrow combination. And, and Mirana has been seeing a lot of traction as a, as a mid to late game core lately mm. anyways. And then Ventral Spear is a good five position that could, or even a carry that could help out somebody that is trapped in a cross. But these spans just make sense. Okay. What do you think Synergy is going to play this game? Because he's been on a lot of those um, aggressive supports. So we saw him a lot of on Clockworks, why Clockworks banned out yep. for OG. Uh, he's played Spear Breaker, maybe not as with as much success, but but uh, a lot of oh, rotating beefy uh, supports. Oh, is Sandpeak one, one of those? Could be that one. Unless mid or feed uh, pulls a page out of the complexity playbook, mm -hmm. and plays it as an off lane. I wonder if this is where OG just takes Rubik here. This really good steals already. Uh, Sanking Burrow Strike, and even the uh, the Void Time Walk, if you get it, is going to be quite good. Five and of course, you can always seal the bubble. Even though you can't Chrono the Void, you could Chrono anyone else. And as I recall it, OG has a particularly good Rubik player. They do. Jerry. Here we go. So... OG thinking about their next pick. If we are assuming this is Fly and uh, an S4 hero so far. I mean, they, they've got some team fight already. Do you feel like they need something that synergizes well with a Puck? Or is Puck just good with a lot of combinations? I think Puck is very good with a ton of heroes. I don't think you need to waste a pick too early. Um, okay. I think earlier in the draft, what you want to do is focus on hiding your lanes, which these two heroes already do very well. <laughs> and then just pick up good laners overall. You don't want to pick up, let's say, anti-mage, which gives away your strategy very much so, and then like makes you forced to dedicate yourself Dying. into a certain strategy. We're gonna see a Shadow Shaman, so this already puts in the question of who's playing the Wyvern, is Wyvern the four? Yeah. Because we know Fly is amazing <clears throat> on the Shaman, yeah. so he's most likely playing that. Now that would mean Jarex is a Winter Wyvern, which is not your typical aggressive Jarex hero. Remaining. Because we've seen, in, in most of the games we've seen, there Five are the, the, the two supports are normally four position type of support. Yeah. And OG is not, uh, that's, like, that's just not the case with the Winter Ripen and the Shadow. I mean, we saw Z Freak playing Wyvern the other day. He went True. first item, uh, Silver Edge. Remember, he needed to break. I forgot which hero he needed to break against, but he got Silver Edge and yeah. it, it looked decent there. Crit also mm -hmm. played Wyvern. Crit? Yes, and he yeah. actually won with it. He, he did. did. Yeah, he did. He was very proud of that win. He was. <laughs> Ooh, Pugna. I really like the way that mid or feed is drafting a around this Wyvern. This co embrace literally does nothing. I mean, it's good against the Void, down. right? But that's it. Yeah. Um, there's so much Ten magic damage. Remaining. And that Nether Ward is also going to be very annoying with Shadow Shaman. His mana cost Five is extremely remaining. high. With all of his spells. I do believe the EU flavor of playing Pugna is in the offlane. Yeah, it is. I haven't seen him anywhere else. But, um... Akezu is, is, is pretty versatile. Decently versatile. Pugna definitely can't go to the offlane by himself, though. He needs sanking help, because one of the, the strength of Shaman as a pick is that you get to just walk into a lane, and if there's nobody to help him, Shaco just guarantees a kill. And they are, they are going to play, play AM into Void, which is, like, super risky. You're basically banking on the Chronospheres to, to just, Ten you know, you have a Winter Riven there every time there's a Chronosphere. I mean, as we Five said, like, there's so much magic There's there. already so much magic damage, but then you just got to hope that the rest, you know, is not around in time to... I don't know. It's a, it's a tricky one, but they surely have a plan. So what, what are we looking at for uh, bans and, and last picks here? OG, still assuming that that puck is an S4 puck, so we need a mid hero for them. And for mid or feed, same story, a mid for them. And uh, the first pick... We'll go to, let's see, Ben, 
first pick goes like the next pick goes to OG, so mid or feed can have the the last pick in this one. I think because OG has picked up anti mage, which is such a hard carry that eats so much resource on the map, mm -hmm. you can move the puck mid and pick up a very good defensive off lane. Man, I'm thinking I was right like, in the beginning. What? No, no, we're, we're not sure yet. I'm just this is like my suggestion. I, I think they could pick up something like Omni Knight, right? Because they Omni could, Knight gives you yes. so much more protection against both the Chronosphere and also all the magic damage behind it. So that that would be my guess oh, for geez, the pick. Time uh, to ban. But. Mitterfeed is saying Puck is gonna be the off lane, and they ban out the Ember Spirit. Yeah, we've seen a we've seen a couple of people, a couple of teams having the Winter Riven and Omni Knight in the same team, always with a lot of success. I feel so much healing, but then again, they already have the Ancient Operation as well, Ten seconds so remaining. potentially deal with that. That is five seconds. Is, it, is that not enough? You think it's still good Winter Riven and Omni Knight, regardless? Um, I think so, but. Maybe OG doesn't. Turn to There's an OD. So if the OD is, uh, <clears throat> if they've been out OD mid, is there a specific mid hero that you're thinking about that, whoa, Viper is still in the pool. Yeah, Viper is quite good here too. Yes. I uh, think they, I think OG bans OD remaining. because right now they're, they're all their stuns are very single targeted. Mm -hmm. Five seconds so, remaining. So, like, OD could rescue people with an easy Dire Astro out of, like, Shackle as well as... Venomancer. Are they gonna go Venom for the final pick? The core Venomancer comes out. I don't know how <clears throat> they're gonna protect this AM or Venom or anybody. With the Winter Wyvern? I don't, I, I don't know. Ten seconds remaining. It's a tricky one. Let's see what mid or feed goes for here. Remaining. They're gonna run out of time soon, so they have to be fairly fast. What runs well against the Venomancer mid? Pretty much any non melee hero. All right. As long Easy as you enough. don't get too susceptible to the Gale, you should be okay. Ooh, it's a Shadow Fiend. Hey. Okay. All right. You know I. Is uh, this the, the one back. game? The one game that OG will lose? <clears throat> that would be, as said, very anticlimactic and very sad. What do you think, Charlie? I actually really like Mitterfeet's draft as well. Yeah. Um You have a lot of team fight with both the Pugna, Sand King, Void, and SF. <laughs> and they, actually all, all all their heroes um contribute to that. All right, who do you think is going to win? We got to we got to make the predictions. We got to put the the names on the bottle. Why are you looking at me, dude? You, I'm you the go You're going I'm first. first. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um I think Mitterfeed has the better draft. God. Um <laughs> I'm going for Mitterfeed. All right, I'm going for OG. <clears throat> I'm going for OG on non principle. All right. Not, not I'm, I'm going for it, but I'm hoping it's going to be OG because it's the first game of the day. Come on, they need to win four. Let's see if they can make a good start over to OD Pixel Unfogged. Thank you very much, Chief. Yes, let's see if they can do it. Part one of the four parts that uh, OG need to, to qualify for the major is up against middle feed. And uh, as the panel we said, there's a bit of oohs and ahs. As middle feed's draft, it, it doesn't look too bad. Dude, part one of Goog. Goog, right, Fly? What the heck is that? Let's go OG Goog. Remember from Boston Major? I'd, oh, I know. He said Goog. He said it doesn't sound nice, but Goog. Oh, All right, come on. Well, let's see if they can do this one. Uh, yeah, Mitter Feed, they've got a pretty strong lineup with uh, with Void. They've got good spells to throw inside of it. This Pugna pick is very good versus Winter Wyvern. Obviously, because it's all magic damage, it gives them ways to push the tower. We'll see if it plays out. They are versus an anti mage, so if the game goes late, I think that's what OG is hoping for. Just stall it out. And here we go, OG. They expect the smoke. No tail breaks it. Oh, let's we'll see if we all can get the opening on it. No. Running. Oh, they, they found it. Oh, they should have this. Cancel gets the last hit. And he does. And that's full souls. 12 souls 12. to the lane. Uh oh. What a start for middle feed. There's still positions here on this high ground, too. Yeah, OG. I have to be careful how close they come to this one. I mean, we are. He'll jump in again with another Burrow Strike if they come in range. 
but they'll back off. Right? She's at that. Pretty massive. Getting those souls on the SF. The dream for cancel. That's going to make the mid matchup very difficult for No Tail. Cancel. Force the TP right away. He's going to need some harassment, but he'll be fine. And he's got a. How much damage advantage? 18 damage advantage over Venomancer here. So I'm assuming Jarex is just going to start mid because of that. That was just it. There has to be backup here for No Tail. They've got to make sure that. Uh, Cancel doesn't absolutely destroy No Tail in this mid lane. That's sort of a, a start in the, the soul department. It's, it's going to be p possible. I like the lanes that Midterfeed have set up as well. They have the Void AA versus the Anti Mage, so they're going to put a lot of pressure onto Rezo here. And Kezu's in a 1v1. Kezu, I think it will maybe suffer a little bit more in that instance, He's playing versus S4 Puck, one of S4's best heroes. And yeah, they are starting with Jarex in the mid lane with No Tail. Try to shut down Cancel from having that great head start. Flight. Trying to keep these two on their toes with the Arctic Burn harassment. The thing is that Void can't really help the AA, is the one one nice thing that uh, OG does have going for them in the bottom lane. With the Mana Break, with the Blink, Blink or two, if he gives like an Orb of Venom, they have pretty good chase potential onto that AA. And yeah, Void can't Void can't do too much except just trade right clicks with Anti Mage. Which isn't beneficial for him at the early part of marks. I mean, the thing is as well, surely if you look at the, the overall game, this is. It is a really good anti-mage game, isn't it? The, the, the only sort of lockdown being the Burrow Strike and the Chronosphere. That surely means that if Rezo gets a good start, it's it's going to be very hard for middle feet to, to slow down and stop the anti-mage. Yeah. Well, he definitely has the potential to get out of control this game. And we've seen it many times before when, uh, when an anti-mage has a good lineup to go against. But that, I mean, the head start makes... It really changed a lot of the game. Because Cancel having this much damage just makes it way easier for him to actually play that lane. They zone out Cinderin, and now it's Tomato versus a dual lane bottom. Oh, he actually gets the uh, bash to get the last hit on that neutral creep there. RNG. But he's gonna get... Void's actually gonna get pushed out of this lane now. They need to, they need to have Weehaw make the rotation down there if they want to continue to pressure that AM at all, but... Now he's on his way down. Heroes, it's gonna be way too tough. For Fly. Was he able to get the rune before? Grabs himself the double damage. Yeah, mid lane. CS was with the help of Jerax, No Tail is finding some CS. Cancel still getting a fair few denies through though. Yeah. I guess it is, Weeha's in a position where it's kind of scary, because if he leaves mid, Cancel gets shackled, he's dead. Yeah. But if he doesn't go help bottom, Anti-Mage is going to free farm. And now, yeah, Razzle's already pulling ahead. 12 and 1 to the 5 and 0 of the Void, and same thing with S4 Puck. 11 and 6 to the 7 and 3 of the Pugna. So all three lanes looking pretty nice for OG, just that, I guess, the mid lane is a bit better for mid or feet because of that first blood shadow fiend. Yeah. And cancel. Level wise, with the both on, on level two at the moment, obviously with the having both support soaking up a considerable amount of the experience in the mid lane. Now cancel. And we hit level three. Looks straight away to make a play of it. Him. And it's a very clean one. Very nice move from middle feet. As soon as that level three is there and they've got that extra point in the raise, they know that they've got the damage to do so and, and make that sort of play happen. Very clean. Derek has to be very careful of stepping up in those types of situations. Trying to gale and, and shock the, the SF down a little bit, but... Cancel's looking fine. It's definitely, yeah, as you've been saying, these two side lanes are the real, real success stories for OG. 21 to 3 on Reza's anti mage, 18 to 10 on S4's puck. They they are playing their hearts out to, to get it to the major, no doubt at all in this lane. They're keeping it cool and, and giving us some stellar laning performances. It's a really solid lane uh, for puck yep. versus Pugna. You just have, you know, your own magic damage, you have high right click. Pugna low armor. So S4 is actually committing onto Kezu top. Kezu. Oh, he's going to get it. Oh, dear crap. Can S4 continue to chase this? He is going to attempt so, and he's going to have it Got after Decrep wears out. S4, ladies and gentlemen. Going for early boots. Just be able to put that pressure. Kezu went for early bottle, so he gets a little bit punished because of that, not having his, the same equivalent stats. Mid lane, tri lane coming out from OG now. Jerex, he's got his eyes on Weeha. Weeha. Will be beat away. The right clicks from Shadow Shaman. We're actually coming back in with the Burrow Strike. 
and Storm Up, they don't have detection. They'll actually look towards Cancel. They get the Arctic Burn and the Gale Connection. TP coming in from Sninderan, so OG will back off. Weeha looks towards the Shaman with the Stun and into the raise. Cancel gets another killing spree now for this mid SF. As good reactions from middle feet put a stop to OG's attempts there and secure another kill for the mid laner. Good response TP from Sind. He's pretty poor, but he's definitely doing his job here, making the rotations go around. But Weeha more so is that big playmaker for them. He's even been stacking some jungle camps, as far as I saw, for that Shadow Fiend or him to be enabled. And Arcane Boots will be the choice for Weeha very early on. And look at that Shrine efficiency. Delicious. Adjustments being made. Tomato was starting to catch up a bit in the farm bottom, but not in comparison to Anti-Mage. And now he's going to go safe lane. He can deal a little bit better with Puck. However, Puck has treads already. Yeah, this was and pretty massive. Six. Yeah, he is pretty threatening. I mean, yeah, Fly's going to turn up straight as, as, up to the top lane as quick as Tomato does. And with the Arctic Lam pushing him back. There we go. This could be the 100th win for S4. Quite an iconic milestone for this man to hit on this hero. One of the, the heroes most associated with S4. And for good reason as well. Strong win rate and some very memorable performances on the hero. Curious what build uh, Cancel's going to go for this game. I think he has to go for the right build this game. But oh, having that good. damage can be so bad. S4 top has orb. Goodbye. Just fine. Bit of a slippery one. As we said, the lockdown, it is lacking for, for middle feed. Sure, once the six is there for the void, they've got the, the very strong chronosphere. But other than that, for these sort of elusive heroes like the anti-mage and the puck, it, it really feels like it's set out to be a bit of a dream game. Sure, if they got crushed at the start, the story could be a little different. But the fact of the matter is that they, they did not at all. Both S4 and Resolution, top CS. And I really feel that this is... This could be good enough already for OG. Having this sort of an opening, having this sort of stacked AM and puck very early on, middle feet are going to have to make some big plays around the chronosphere to, to sort of shut them down after this beginning. Yeah, I mean, OG also has like the ways to defend towers very nicely. They have Winter Wyvern, they have Puck and Venot, and to, just to defend those towers while the other other two just farm up. Well, Anti Mage in particular farms at least. No Tail prioritizing the ward build as we see. 2 1 3, he's going to go 2 1 4. Just sit in that mid lane, park it up, don't let them pressure towers. Kezu spending a lot of time running from lane to lane. Cancel as well. Only level 5 on the Shadow Fiend after having that first blood soul bonus. He is already starting to fall a bit behind. Bottom, Kezu, Jerax. Close the gap. He's got the shackles, but he'll, he'll hold back. Yeah, the TP that doesn't eventually get cancelled, but at least the initial attempt of forcing him off from going for more. No tower setting up base in mid lane with the wards. You very hard for Council to push the lane in any further. Kezu doesn't have a good place to go, is my big concern here for Mitterfeed. He's jungling now as the Pugna, so they can't really lane properly. Weeha, getting hit by Arctic Burn. Jerex, looking for Kezu. They've got the mana void. Easy kill. They may even look for Weeha as well. Jump forward, does get the Burrow strike out and away. Weeha will be fine, but as you said, this is huge. Curing kills for the already very fat anti-mage. Tomato is getting forced out too by this puck. The laning phase heavily going in favor of OG now. 2k gold lead at the 8 minute mark with an anti-mage on your lineup. Yep. The absolute dream. No tail. Dancing around with cancel. And collapse is happening. Jer Jerex yeah. wants to rotate mid. They want to try to pressure this tower with level 4 wards. And look at up top, S4. Oh. He's just doing it on his own. Tom I'm surprised Tomato didn't go back to base. He was sitting at like 200 Dyer's HP. It's a attack. bit crazy. Oh, and Jerex, he's found Cancel. Cancel's come for a wall. But the shackles are there. OG, they should almost certainly get this kill. He's being slowed down by the Arctic Burn. Kezu's going to come in to try and provide some sort of savior, but it doesn't matter. Cancel's down. They will find Jerex in return. Looking for the body blocks, Sindarin trying to catch on to No-Tail, but No-Tail is able to turn with the three-man Gale. Middle feet cannot chase him. Sindarin actually ticking down rather low to the wards. He should survive. These little plays, very much securing OG this lead. And uh, I mean, this is how close, uh, what, what, what sort of timing we're we gonna be looking at in this battle here. It's gonna be good, isn't it, for Resolution? He's got treads on top of the purse and he's yeah. only 1,100 gold away from that demon edge, so. And S4 as well, 4K. Gold on the puck with the solo kills that he's been getting. 
This is going to be a very, very quick link, link down going all. They're looking to set up for Max the skill. They've got a lot of disable. Silence there as well at the burst. Another kill on to Tomato. OG. Not they, messing around. Absolutely not. They need to win four games. And this sort of a start to this one with the draft that they have, like, this is... This is so bad for Middlefield. They, they have to make some sort of major play with the Chronosphere. But as it has been there, they've just not been doing so. They've left Tomato on his own. He keeps dying in this top lane. S4 is getting these kills. Rezo is having all the space in the world. I don't know what the plan is for Middlefield, but I feel like whatever it was, it was not a success early on. They can't get the group up. The only way they can group up is with Chrono. And if he does use it, yeah. it's, a hundred, it's it's got a long cooldown. 140 seconds. That's the only way they can get aggressive until they have SK Blink Dagger. And Weeha went for Arcane Boots. And so he's not going to have that Blink Dagger for a, a very, time. very long time. Unless they find the kills and they are smoked up, Cherax may be the one to tank this. It's not really the kill that they want to go for. And Tomato, he really doesn't want to use the Chrono just for a, a Shadow Shaman. And he won't need to. They, they do have to lock him it. up. Yeah, they have to save that Chrono yeah. for core kills. They There's no to. way they can use it on supports. That'll be super costly against them. Rezo, getting closer and closer to that battlefield. Even stacking for himself a bit at that hard camp. And now mid, cancel. Gets scaled up, ulted as well. He has a TP. He's going to lead forward onto No Tail. No Tail sort of taunting him there as he back forwards and back. And there's S4 with the jump in from the Blink Dagger. Dream Call, Silence on to do cancel, and we are it down. Now, Great Blink reveal from S4, and indeed. Jax drops the wards, ready for the tier one push. Oh god. They're fighting as four, they're winning these trades very easily as just the four heroes, and this is the dream for an anti-mage game. Rezo gets all the space in the world, his team do not need him at the moment, and he can be just left to build and to carry for the late stages of the game. And with that tower going down, I imagine the Battle of Fury is pretty much nearly there, isn't it, for Reza? He has it, yeah. He's gonna go pick it up right now. So, a pre-12 minute Battle Fury treads for an anti-mage against a largely magical damage focused lineup. I don't know what you do for your middle feed. They're in a this very, very tough spot at the moment already. Yeah. The only lane that they can try to, they can, the only thing they can really do actually is five men. I think that's the best option. I think if they keep splitting up like this, they're just going to keep getting caught out by S4's Blink Dagger. Yeah. They have to five men with the Chrono and try to get pickups here. But Tomato queued up, you know, he got Ring of Health and now he's going for Treads after Aquila. So his item timings are a bit, a bit odd now. He, it looked like he wanted to go for something like a Battle Fury to match the pace of the Anti-Mage, but... For that, I mean... You can't, you can't do it with a Shadow Fiend on your team. I was going to say, and, and if he does want to go for the Battle Fury, it's it's going to be there so much slower than the Anti-Mage. With the, as you said, with the way that, that he has had this landing stage and how far he is through the build at the moment. I think they're already just in a really tough spot. It, feel, it feels like the game's already lost. It does It does feel like that because Puck... Because it's an anti-mage. Like, you normally wouldn't say that, but it's it's an anti-mage. This is a hero that we've seen so many times just win games from a good start, and that's what OG's got. They've got the, right, more than a good start. They've had a fantastic start. They're 5k ahead at 12 minutes in, and the anti-mage has only just picked up his Battle Fury, so that is going to just absolutely fly off the charts. And unless they make some massive mistake, Resolution should have a very easy time carrying this game to a victory. No tell taking the Venomous Gale cooldown, not even taking the GPM. So he wants to just yep. be playing around his team the whole time. I mean, as expected, he's with an anti-mage on his team. So might as well just be playing the team fight aspect in mid or feed. They are looking to set up on him, but now they show three heroes. And no tell will get the hell out of there. Top tower will be punished by OG, while Rezo is just going to continue farming the neutrals for the time being, blinking around, clearing those camps up extremely quickly. And nobody on the side of mid or feed can do similar. Cancel can, but he wants to, be able to have to, he has to be able to pressure towers. Smart is hunting. He may just chrono for this kill. They know that no tails here. He should just drop the chrono. He's actually going to take an ult to himself. And in fact, he's trying to TP out of this. Okay, they get the kill without the chrono usage. They do bring no tail down. As you say, the other lanes are getting pushed in. Yeah. Sure, no tail. It is a nice kill. It is that mid Venno. But considering the way the lanes went, it's actually S4 over no tail. And uh, of course, resolution in the top in terms of priority of heroes you want to be dealing with as S4. He's going to have the Kaya complete in a minute. No tail's job in this game is to die, pretty much. Yeah. As his Venomancer. He wants to die to those ganks over and over again. 
trying to blast bottom tower. Oh, they actually don't get the last hit on it either. There's two creeps there that took it from a Pugna Shadow Fiend. And Council just having to go straight for the Treads BKB build this game. Yeah. He knows that otherwise he is just going to die. Model. Looking for fly. He's got the Chrono, but again, really doesn't want to use it for these sort of kills. As S4 in the, the big ones. Yeah, S4 just jumped in straight away onto Cinderin. Cinderin throws out the Ice Blast. But Cinderin is down. S4 gets out to Mardo. Does get a big Chrono, but oh, it doesn't catch Fly. So Fly gets the Winter's Curse off. Looks look, look, like it doesn't matter, because they do get the S4 kill with the uh, the Drain from Kezu. That's pretty decent. It is indeed, yeah. S4, definitely a big kill for them to get. And Tamano still eyeing up Fly. Oh, for all. Rezo turns up. Quick mana void. Blows up one. And now with the Hex, he looks for a second. And Tamato, he's gone as well. Can't Cancel. Uh, TP. Oh. He did get the kill onto the Wyvern, but at the end of the day, it's Resolution getting a double kill. He's got 9.2k net worth. Highest on the side of middle feed is, is Kezu at 5.6k. His GPM very high for this stage of the game. Playing Pugna versus Anti-Mage is actually one of the most impossible things ever yeah. because you have the largest mana pool in the game. You have a 4.5 int in and he, he will pretty much always go Aether Lens for that, for that uh, cast range. So you're sitting at, look, 1500 mana. Razzo's gonna pop him every single time and be very satisfied because that's the highest net worth as well on mid feet. He's their killer. He's their kill hero inside the Chronosphere until Sanking has Blink Dagger. Level 15 already on Rezo. How ahead is he? Four levels ahead of the next on Mitter Feed, being the Pugna and, and the Shadow Fiend at 11. Already with Manta finished up in a second. It's gonna be at like 17 minutes, not even that he has Manta style Battle Fury. I don't know, Owen. I don't know how they can really try to take advantage of this anti just free farming. They have to find more kills, they have to find more objectives, and I don't see a really good way for them to do it versus this Winter Wyvern Venomancer who just constantly shove out the waves with yeah. the with the wards, with the Splinter's Blast. I mean, you, you, just the, the anti mage is a hero. It's just there are games like this where he can just absolutely yeah, crush your bottom lane as for jumps in. Jarex is going to be there for the further disable, and that will allow the two of them to claim the kill. Get themselves out of the Ice Blast, back away, and now, ooh. Maybe even find more. They've got the Winter's Curse set up onto Kezu. It's for the Hex. OG, take a second. We are just coming with the Epicenter. And we'll actually find the kill onto S4. So, punished a little bit there for the greediness, OG. Jerex still eyes on Sinner. In fact, oh, he's just has a blast to take it. Double kill for Jerex as he just waltzes out on the Shaman. He's thinking about, about going back in onto Weeha. He's eyeing up the Sanking. I have to be careful with that, that Nether Ward down. Yeah. He might kill himself. He has to be very careful. So, we S4, have S4 died a few times. This yeah. is good news for... Uh, for mid or feed, but uh, the the, the anti-mage is not dying at all. In fact, I don't think Resolution's actually been under any sort of threat for the entire entirety of this game. He's level 17 at 17 minutes in. He's got a Manta style. 234 last hit, yeah. 17 minutes. You're not beating this anti -mage. Rezo knows he's got to win every game today to get to the Major, and he is absolutely playing like he knows. He's, he's absolutely bossing it. Yeah. We at least has a blink dagger at a pretty good timing, right? So that bottom epicenter came out because of yeah. the uh, the blink. However, the rest of his team is in farming so great. Tomato queues up the Lincoln Sphere. He had Ring of Health already on top of Treads. And how's our Sin doing? Sin is trying to work hard that Glimmer Cape. Quite a ways away though. But yeah, it's the timer. Level 18 already on Anti Mage. Level 3 Mana Void at the ready. And Notel is preparing for Roshan. He has the medallion. And like I said, Venno, his job is pretty much just push lanes and die. Tank the ultimates so that your anti-mage can carry the game by himself. Jerax has blink. Tried to get the catch on Tomato, but unable to find it. Rezo. All right, sees an opportunity for a kill. I can't quite find the mana void, though. We are just managed to juke him and survive for now with the sandstorm. Back to farming, Rez yeah. says Rezo. I mean, so a bit standard anti-mage game. What point does Rezo actually uh, decide he wants to finish the game? Do you stick slot it? That's when you get there, or Aegis? Aegis can be a big timer, yeah. Okay. They use, Do some of that. We well, have you've said from time to time when you're playing versus some of these like big ulties like Chronosphere. You get Aegis, they use Chronosphere. Their big, their big like, cooldown spell is used. You can then threaten high ground. You might even just wait for the butterfly since he's so close on this anti-mage. 
doubling the net worth of the next hero. Actually, funnily enough, to, uh, you know, watching and, and talking about Resolution Anti Mage, wasn't it last uh, last Dream uh, DreamHack Atlanta when um, Planet Odd turned up and they've been having a bit of a tough time? And then didn't they proceed to win lots of games because they were drafting Resolution Anti Mage? Yes. Yeah. It was. They also lost a couple games because it was like impossible Anti Mage teams for Flick with Top. Oh, yes, jungle. I remember. All right. Now we go jump in. They've got the Ice Blast flying through as well. No tell. Doing his job. He did his job. Dying. Yep. That's and as for oh. trade kills. So let's get a three man dream call. Has to go out though, but it procs the BKB from Cancel. Cancel pressed it. So he's got a TP across. They're looking to chase this one down and they may just get it. He's got the phase shift test for the Winter's Curse is there from Fly, buying the time for S4 to blink out. And they're just creating space. Yep. Rezu has, Rezu has no interest. He's like, oh, oh no tail dive? Yeah. Good, good job. I go back jungle. Rezu at 20 minutes. Oh, it's time for me to finish my butterfly. That is He's pretty much got it. some absurd timing. He's going to have a 21, 22 minute butterfly. And I don't know how they kill this guy. I, I just don't see this anti-mage dying. He's at 15 yeah. last hits per minute at the moment. 300 CS at 20 minutes in. That I don't know. I don't know if that's necessarily a record because I know there has been some incredible anti-mage games in the past, but it's it's definitely got to be up there at the top. It's it's. I think it's ambush. She might be. We've seen some Naga games where they're really high up too. But Jarex now finding Weeha. Oh, I'll take that Reza. There we go. And now Butterfly complete. Yep. 20 minutes in for resolution. Kazu, they got vision him for a second. Oh, that's a kill. I'll look for that one. He might not get this one. He's oh, he's, he's, yeah, he's going for it. And uh, he's got it. Oh, that's mine. Resolution picks up the double kill. Does big Oh, he's got the center as well with the illusion hitting him. He's going to be able to get Sin too. Sin's going to go down. They do lose the Aegis, but already. Middle feet have lost three. They have the one man Chrono to monitor. Oh, God, he did get two there. Did get S4 as well. S4 does go down. But Rezo, he's just going to start cleaning up. He'll get a triple kill. Move towards Tomato. I'll take that one as well. Actually, no tail was the one to kill secure that one. But that's the butterfly done. Resolution instantly with 1400 gold on top of the butterfly. 12k gold lead with an anti mage. We've said it since sort of the six minute mark, but I. This game just. It feels like it's over. Oh, it's, it is definitely almost impossible. Uh, it's, it's definitely like impossible for Midterfeet to win. This is 18k net worth he against. He's going to have the yeah. same net worth soon as the three cores on the side of Midterfeet. Oh, yeah, he's already got the same as the two added together. Yeah. Let's just keep following him. He's almost got Bastion. I'm just going to double click his portrait. Let's watch this man farm. 900 XP a minute as well with these kills that he's been finding. Easy levels for Reza. 857 GPM. No tail, doing his job. Yeah, well played, no tail. Good job, no tail. Yeah, Rezo gives him a command. There we go, so we're gone. 285 last turn, it's at the 20 minute exit. It's the highest on any hero since What? Since TI5. Yeah. No way. Yeah. It is that. Jeez. Dude, he's. It's pretty absurd when you see this type of last hitting. Like, now he's sitting uh, past <laughs> 16, 16 last hits per minute. He's going to keep accelerating. You don't see that type of farm this is the almost ever. Yeah. He might wow. actually, yeah, he might pass it. He might pass all the records. And look at the speed he's winning this AM game. 20k net worth at 22 20... minutes. Almost 1k GPM on an anti mage. He's going for it. That's probably his goal. This is crazy. I mean, Rezo is here to win and at some pace. He must have had a, a lady ring him up and say she was home alone. Rezo, he's, he's racing through this one. He wants to be done with his games. He wants to be qualified for the major and get this day over with. Mid lane, Tomato, good little look for the pickup here. Does he have Lincoln's finish? He does not have it yet. Jarex gets the grab. Well, I've, I've enjoyed watching Middlefeet here. We've had some entertaining games. This one's just feels a little bad. Yeah. We hot, gets oh. hit by Venno Ward. And it's a blink in, no tip. Actually gonna survive the fourth step slimmer. Rezo's ready to get some kills. He says, I'm ready to party, boys. Can drops the record and pops the BKB, but Rezo's fine. He just waltzes off. He's gonna be ready to jump back in if he wants to. Doesn't need to, as it is, of course. In fact, they may even be able to win this game with the rest of OG having their hands on the keyboard, just leaving it to Rezo now at this stage. He's level 23, nearly 24. And he's only got a Abyssal Blade. Will he get 25 before the 25 minute mark? He's got to hurry up. Oh, an ancient stack. Wait, is he literally just a bit boost away from Abyssal Blade? He's got the rest yeah, of he's got it. He's got it. He's got it in a second. He can... Yep. Oh, my. He's, there's, yeah. no, there's no jungle for him. He's waiting for the bunny runes. This is slowing him on his farm. I mean, not, there really is no other hero that could do this. But then, to be fair, there's not a lot of players at all. In fact, there's very few players that could pull this off. In fact, he's, he's the number one anti-mage. 
as uh, in terms of the records, in terms I, of the stats. I'm just watching. Got. Is he gonna make it? So what do we got? Other record last hits. Okay. Thirty minutes, four hundred eighty-seven. How many? How many CS has he got at the moment? How Dude, many he's CS av he's averaging four hundred CS because he's averaging a twenty-four. Minute. But it, I can't do too much math right now. It's, it's over seventeen last hits per minute. So that is beating S Triple C if he hits the thirty-minute mark. If it gets to that point. Wait, he li he is. I think he's about ten CS away from having more CS than the entirety of Middle Feet combined. If, I, if my maths is right, look, 158 plus 104. That's what 262. Oh, yeah, right. 370. It's it's getting close. He he's nearly has. Now though, he's got the abyssal, so he wants to just yeah. get frags. He has more CS than the three cores of Middle Feet put together. Yep. That's for sure. He's fine. Oh no. The Lincolns gets delivered. Is it gonna be enough to save him though? Rezo finds find the courier. And of course, gonna be ready to, to jump into the fight as well. Rezo, he says. Time to fight. I'll finish farming. I'll take one kill. I'll take two kill. Give me the double kill. I'll take three kills. Cinderin's down. Go on, give it. He wants a rampage. You know, he's done. He's going to go back in, surely. He says, I want to get all five of these. He's looking towards Cancel. Uh, they've got the control. Cancel trying to run himself away. He's revving up the wreck for him. And that's how it goes back in. I'll take the ultra kill. Oh, Where's rampage. my rampage? Rezo, he wants it. There and it he gets it. Can Easy get rampage. Get oh, is he getting a double? He's not done. He wants more. I'll take that as well. There Thank you very much. What's the Double GGM? rampage for Rezo. 984. Oh! He's almost all the GG out before the 1K. If he gets the tower. No, he's not going to make it. Okay. All right. Record's I mean, broken. I don't think we're Ankle's broken. I don't think we're seeing any more anti maze today. I really don't. If anyone lets it through, then uh, we're going to have to investigate them for free 2 2 because you don't, you don't let this guy play with anti maze. Not when you pick Pugna in the third. I mean, sure, but I, even just the way he plays it, just even if you have, like, the dream lineup against it, I feel like he's still going to have a good game. It's resolution anti-match. He is just... That is incredible. I, people will probably come in.